there's no such thing. thing as a perfect couple, but knowing that you have shortcomings, but you recognize that you there's other people that are working on themselves and you want to surround yourselves like we talk about with an iron tribe. People just as iron sharpens iron, we as couples should be sharpening each other. Always. Five, four, three, two, one. Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, E.T. Look, if you're looking to or you got to raise the bar on your marriage, you got to you gotta click the link and get into Married in the Crazy, y'all. I'm telling you, this coaching is going to take your relationship to another level. Now, look, you already know you need to raise the bar. You know that already. So stop thinking or overthinking. Click that link and Marriage in the Crazy is going to take you and your spouse to marital bliss. Now you know. Click the button. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of the Married in the Crazy podcast with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I'm Snooks. And it is so nice to be back in the studio, back in the house of love, back in the crazy studios. For those of you that are new, <laughs> why are you laughing? That it, it's so good to be back in the house like you got kicked out or something i feel like that i mean we, I know, we, it's been a minute the like, season that we're in we, i mean we've shifted our, our recording schedule to make sure it's not too overwhelming because of all the stuff that you have on your plate um with all the stuff that you know adjusting our household to isaiah but wait you said you feel like you've been kicked out the house no just oh, okay. uh, out the studio oh, okay so for those of you that are listening for the very first time uh, we welcome you I, welcome. Uh, <laughs> we're a couple that's been married for 26 years and uh, we've gone through some things so go back and take a look at some of the early episodes specifically the very first one bamboozled and then as you progress you'll hear the story unfold but the bottom line is that um, we are still here we are still here before we got married during our engagement i mean immediately like almost as soon as we got engaged um, I ended up getting stabbed. Knife went all the way through my heart. Had two open heart surgeries. Oh, did we mention that it was her ex boyfriend that stabbed me? That's an important fact. And that sounded like you was throwing shade, though. No, no shade. And the way that you looked at me, kind of side eye. No, full eye. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean we're laughing about it now, but it was one of those things where it's not funny stuff. We've been through some stuff, and then you know, of course, you know, there's the little thing of. Snooks asking for a divorce four years after we got married. Mm-hmm. Not, and it wasn't uncalled for. I mean, it's just that, you know, you're supposed to deal with it. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> okay. You try no. to get put out real, right? Okay. No, but these are the things. There, there, there's that and so much more that we've been through. And we've decided to actually share our experiences, bring you subject matter experts, other couples that have gone through things as well. We've had people on the on the show that have ranged from professional athletes um, through Grammy award-winning artists um, and and their amazing spouses that have helped them through these these things, right? And, and it's always a story of you know adversity and overcoming that. Mm-hmm. And so what we want to do is just kind of bring you up to speed on what's going on with us. And also, um, there's a really nice topic we want to talk about: the top three reasons why you should attend a marriage conference. So, I mean, it's it's not just out of the blue, like, hey, let's talk about why you should attend a marriage conference. Um, We actually attended a marriage conference. An amazing marriage conference. It was phenomenal. We had such a great time. We had such a great time. We met some wonderful people. Um, We got just poured into. And, um, yeah. Shout out to CMCR, and that stands for Christian Marriages. Commitment renewed, and it used to stand for something else, but they changed it. This <laughs> this, this marriage conference has been around since 1979. Every year, with the exception, I think there was uh, during COVID, there was one year for sure, potentially two, where they did not, they were not able to meet just because of all the challenges that COVID presented. Um, but since 1979, 
mm-hmm. there's been a, a, an assortment of individuals that have met under the umbrella of CMCR. Yeah, it used to stand for a Christian marriage couples retreat. Right. Which, I mean, it is a couples retreat and it is Christian based. So that made sense. But um, they wanted to, they changed the name. I think she said some years ago. Two. I don't remember. Was it just two? Just Yeah, so it's new. Oh, coming they, out of COVID. Coming out of COVID, COVID, they changed the name. Because it, it had to be something to do with, you know, renewing the commitment to your marriages. Mm-hmm. I mean, because if, just keep it real, you know, a lot of marriages, a lot of uh, marriages uh, maybe didn't make it. And if they did make out of COVID, out of COVID, light was shed on a lot of things that happen inside your home during COVID. You got people that have been in the home 24 hours a day with each other. I mean, the 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 numbers for abuse went up um, dramatically. Dramatically. So, you know, you got, <laughs> you got this wonderful person at work and then you come home and you're a beast. Well, and it's a challenge because think about it. During COVID, there was a period where you didn't get to go to work. No, I'm just saying, you know, some people... It's like the masks were pulled away. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. So now you can't hide. Well, and, and when they were home, they was like, oh, who are you? I'm, I'm used to being away from you for eight to nine hours. And now i got to deal with you all the time. Mm, uh-uh, no, I'm not sure I even like you anymore. Mm-hmm. And then that's why there were a lot of challenges with that. So with that said, this amazing conference, I mean, we talk about the talent, um, the musical representation that was there. Um, was just off the charts. Man, when he pulled out that saxophone. It, it, it was pretty I was amazing. like, uh, yes, yes, yes. Anyway, I mean, it it was just, it was just a great, great time. Here, Here's the thing about, um, I'm just kind of going to jump right into it. Here's the, the thing about going to, um, for me, going to a marriage conference. Mm-hmm. You get to focus all of your attention on your spouse. You know, we talk about being intentional and sometimes it's really hard to be intentional when you have all of this outside noise. I like to call it noise or these outside um, distractions, distractions that are always, always, always plugging at you, pulling on you. You know, you're, you, you got this to do, you got that to do. You, and then it's like the, like a, you have a, a a glass that's full and you know, you keep pouring, I'm pouring here, I'm pouring there, I'm pouring there, I'm pouring there, I'm pouring there. And now I have maybe a fourth of a cup left and that's what I give to my spouse, hmm. you know, the leftovers pretty much. And you know, your spouse though, typically they understand they might feel some kind of way about that. And even in let's just, in the beginning, maybe, oh, babe, I get you. I, I got it. I got it. But then sometimes there there could be resentment that sets in. Like, oh, you got time for everybody else, but you ain't got time for me? Are you serious right now? Well, think about it. How, how do you feel? Let's make it more practical. Imagine going to a buffet with the most amazing food that has been advertised. And everyone's talking about, oh, you got to go check out this spot because the lobster is amazing. And, you know, the, 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 the steak is always prepared just right. Or, or you know, it's got this vegan platform where it's just amazing where you you just don't even know how great it tastes it's just because you've never experienced it anything yeah it's, it's been built up to be this amazing thing and when you get there there's scraps it's been picked over there's only like you know a few crumbs here and there it looks like something good was there but it's no longer there or there's a portion of it or you got the edges cut off you know there's just but it's not what you thought it was going to be because and, it's been built up and the restaurant doesn't replenish what was taken away Exactly. So, and you keep hearing about how great it used to be, or could have been, or what, how great it was for somebody else. He should have got here early, <laughs> right? Well, and, and our marriages shouldn't be like that, and yet so often it is, and it's not through anybody's fault because you have to be extremely intentional about how you're approaching your marriage. We talked a lot about that. Um, I mean, I, I feel like us as a couple, we always talk about being intentional. You have to be intentional, and it was just great that other people thinking the same thing you have to be intentional ain't nothing gonna happen by accident you know you know the keynote speakers you know i I say speakers uh it was a christian event Uh, we make no bones about it you know we 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 let you guys know that a 
Had I been around during the time of Christ, I would have been the 13th apostle. Right? Yeah, we, we, they know the story. I know, I, but I love telling it, but I'm not going to go into it today. <laughs> but no, it was it was amazing, you know. So the the word was brought on Sunday by, you know, uh, Pastor O.J. Swanigan and his wonderful first lady. And the we had a chance to facilitate. Here's the thing. We were already booked to go to a marriage conference, mm -hmm. one that we were going to attend. And then this group had reached out to ask if we would facilitate. So we did a two-hour segment on Saturday mm -hmm. um, and, and teaching to the, to the group. And mind you, there was over 750 years of marital experience in this conference. Mm -hmm. There were couples that ranged from being married just one week mm -hmm. all the way to 62 years. Let me let me speak on that right quick. I love when they stood up, the young couple, and they stood up and they had just been married for one week. It is like, you know, they saw the value in coming to a retreat. It's like, okay, I love you. You know, yeah, we could be off in, in Bali or wherever, Maldives, wherever, you know, staying at home. Who, who knows? But they saw the value in saying, no, let's go get some nuggets. <laughs> let's go right. get some tools. Let's let's be around the people um, with the experience that have something to say so that we could be part of that 62-year-old, you know, when we stand up years and years later, we're we're still going strong at it, you know. To so. hear the wisdom. And that's, and that's one of the reasons, one of the three reasons why you should be able to connect with other like-minded couples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when you attend a marriage conference, you have the opportunity to not just only share your experiences, mm -hmm. but you actually have the opportunity to learn from others and gain support and encouragement, mm -hmm. right? Because let's face it, we're all human. We all go through stuff. Yeah. And, 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 and one of the things about going to a marriage conference is, while you're there, you're focused and you it's easy to be, oh, I'm so in love and I refreshed and but then when after I leave, then you come back to the regular minutia of life. Of life. The connections that you made while you were there, you know, you find you some folk that and, and we always talk about it, you know, we have an iron tribe. And it's let's, let's 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 we do have an Iron Tribe, so you can always go to Facebook oh. <laughs> and and see and visit and join our free Facebook community that is called Iron Tribe, the marriage community, where we drop nuggets in there, and there's a variety of other couples that actually share in there as well. And we welcome you to come and, and be part of the conversation also. We've actually, you know, done virtual date with uh, a couple Iron Tribe members, you it's know, which is, which is cool. Um, but... Yeah. Just going and, and um, making the connection with other couples, we found couples that um, we connected with couples that live maybe 15 minutes away from us, some 20 minutes away. And we're like, OK, Leah, we're going to get together. We're going to have dinner and, you know, just stay connected because it's, it's it, it means something to be in a circle of like minded people. I want to be around married couples who actually like each other, who <laughs> actually like spending time together and who actually value their marriage. And it's not just like, Oh, it's whatever, you know, well, no, what we got going on is what we got going on. No, they, they saw fit to spend money, hard earned cash, invest, invest their time and coming and saying, Hey, we want to be better. We want to improve. We want to, we want to climb that ladder. We want to be phenomenal. You know, so that and, that's one of the reasons. And we all have stuff to work on. Everybody stuff to work on has stuff to work on. So it's not like anybody is there saying, well, I want to be around a bunch of other perfect couples. No, that's not even it. Not even close because, A, you're not perfect. B, we're not perfect. B, nobody is. I said A, B, B. A, B, <laughs> and then C. <laughs> There's no it's such okay. thing as a perfect couple, but knowing that you have shortcomings but you recognize that you there's other people that are working on themselves and you want to surround yourselves like we talk about with an iron tribe people just as iron sharpens iron we as couples should be sharpening each other always mm -hmm. and this helps you stay accountable and motivated to continue investing in your relationship mm -hmm. and that's the wonderful thing about it we as a matter of fact um one of the pastors that had attended 
he and I just by happenstance happened to get up early in the morning, 6 a.m. in the morning to go walking out in Lake Tahoe because the lake was amazing. And we we're right there in God's majestic country. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, I don't want to just lay. I was wide awake. Like, I'm not going to just lay here. I can lay down at home. Why don't I get out and walk? And he had to actually go and get a, uh, he was supposed to go move the car so he can actually take the stuff out of the, 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 the room and put it in the car. We ended up walking for 30 minutes <laughs> around the, the complex and around the lake, you know, or the portions of it to where we could actually see it just to have a conversation. Mm-hmm. And that was a major part of it. Just making that connection with another man that is also trying to grow his marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, it didn't matter that he's married for two years. I've been married for 26 years. He was pouring into me and I was pouring into him. And mm-hmm. we even had a conversation. We connected today. We had a conversation today, just following up, follow up after the conference, the meeting after the meeting, so to speak. Mm. And we're looking forward to continuing this fellowship. That's what you have to gain. One of the things you have to gain when you go to this marriage conference, there was a breakout session where after all the couples were together and we taught our, our portion, there was a breakout of the men and the women. So men folk got to handle some men stuff. The women got to handle some, you know, women stuff. And it's nice to be able to break it down because there's no pretenses. There's no masks. Safe. I was about to say, that's the thing. It's safe. It was a very safe space. No judgment, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, we we talked about, it was, it was deep. We talked about some stuff. Come on, share. Come on, tell me. No. Anyway. <laughs> no, on our side, it was like it was a cross between being, you know, uh, getting it from the pulpit and also getting it from the barbershop. There were, there were some brothers there that were, that were breaking down scripture based on some of the challenges that some of the men were having. And there were some guys that were giving some very practical, straight from the street, from the heart, you know, ideas on how to actually meet some of the challenges and the obstacles. And it, it was just extremely valuable. So that's one of the things. Something else that you could actually gain. Well, well, let me ask you, what do you, what else do you think can you gain from a marriage conference? Um, there's a lot, but so just the information too, you know, we're big on tools. We're big on, um, you know, just little things that, well, I'll say little things, but yeah, it is the little things that will help you enhance, you know, the day to day things. And there were a lot of tools there that, uh, we talked <laughs> Uh, another c- couple, um, Pastor Swanigan, he was like, yeah, you know, they do the check-in. And Lovey and I, we were like, we do the check-in, you know? So it's like we didn't originate it. or but right. There's no copyright on it, but it was like. No, but it, it was just good. There's nothing that makes me more happy when I hear another couple um, implementing things that we implement and it be successful and not, i'm not saying that we taught them or we told them no. about it we we didn't but that just goes to show that okay it's, it works i mean it's it, confirmation it, that confirmation exactly it works so just finding new tools that will um that can help you you know um uh, in 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 your struggle or or whatever it is it could be like we said the check in is that's a great tool you know, you may find something how to deal with conflict, you know, find some resolution with some conflicts. Um, communication is always key. How to effectively communicate, how to um, talk to one another. You know, one thing that that we we, we talk about and, it, and it's about learning how to you need to learn how your spouse accepts a, like apologizes what is that called the apology test or apology language or whatever but anyway i'm i'm yeah, Gary Chapman has a book you know um when sorry isn't enough yeah and he talks about taking an apology quiz it's like an apology assessment to to understand your apology style mm-hmm. and how to apology and not just how to apologize but also how to accept apologies and to understand that there might be a different way that we each have it's it's a great book so i mean things like that like resources like that um it, I just love how there there are just there's so many different things that not it, just tools, that accessible, but skill sets, you know, mm-hmm. sharing things. So so you're looking at the check in, right? Just checking in. Like for us, we've always told you this is we're very, very transparent. You know, I talked about it in, in the TED talk I did a couple of years ago, the the TEDx talk I did a couple of years ago, 
and, and it was specifically about we good our, our check-in is a two-word check-in it's that simple we good mm-hmm. and it's random any given moment and if it's not good we talk about it if it is all right cool is there anything i need to do to make it better or whatever and, but we have a conversation around it and we're very 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 honest as a matter of fact we had a check-in um that evening um and we we sat there and 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 we talked you know and it's so funny to me because a lot of times people think that when you are um like we're we're us we love each other it's obvious and you know we speak to other couples or whatever but people think that you don't still have challenges and it's like no we still have challenges i mean we we have mastered how to deal with our challenges now when we talk is not taking it personal is not you know i'm about to get mad because i don't like how you said it or you know i i can read lovey's language body language and if i feel like i'm like okay you yes. might be making him feel some kind of way he's starting to get flooded or whatever so i'm i'm gonna just okay we'll table this and I don't use it, and he doesn't use, neither one of us, we use anything that we talk about. Um, we don't weaponize any of it, you know. We're just like, okay, I see that you're getting flooded, or I see, I mean, I use flooded. I'm like, okay, I feel like you're feeling some kind of way. And I'm not being snarky or anything like that when I say it, because what he has to say means something to me. What I have to say means something to me, so I want him to be fully invested in what I'm saying. You know, so we just learn how to talk. And like right. I said, we had a very open and honest conversation at the um conference. at the conference, you know. And, and you have to be open to receiving new skill sets, new perspectives, mm-hmm. new tools, you know, to, to help improve your communication, deepen your intimacy. There's a lot of talk about intimacy and enhance the overall quality of your marriage, of your relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things where these skills are going to often include, you know, ways to overcome, or I should say not overcome, but to deal with conflict resolution, to effectively um, enhance your communication style, um, improve your emotional intelligence, or at least teach you that there is such a thing as emotional intelligence. That's what to say because a lot of people don't know that. Mm -hmm. There's problem solving and so much more that you're able to access. I know that we personally, we gave away over $500 worth of merchandise to all the, the attendees that were there. Um, in the in the way of tools, mm-hmm. things that we believe in, mm-hmm. you know, and and so and that's not glorifying us. It's just that we believe in it that much that we gave it away to this group as a gift because we believe in the covenant of marriage mm-hmm. that much. And by attending a conference, you can gain insights from let's call them experts. There was over seven hundred and fifty years of marital experience yeah, combined. You know, all the couples had to stand up. I love that part. Every all the couples stand up and they say how long they've been married and um you know some of them even told their origin story which is so super cute especially the older one. Oh my god! I love, I love 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 listening to the older ones talk about you know how they met and how they got together because you know is it was a different time than it than it it is now like Mrs. Anderson. She said she was checking him out and <laughs> he went fishing or something. And she, he would, how she say it? Something like she, she would, he went fishing and, and he got hooked or something like that. It was, it was really cute what, the way that she said it though. But yeah, married 62 years mm-hmm. and, and the love in their eyes and watching them dance. Oh yeah. We had a um, fully functional couple. I mean, they were out there doing their thing. Well, he was sitting down in the chair. Yeah, he was. And, and it was funny. But, but it, there's was another couple of 59 years. There's another couple that was 30, uh, quite a few couples that were 30 plus years, 30, 40. That was encouraging because so often we felt like more times than not, <laughs> we're one of the tenured couples in the, in the groups that we've been involved with. And I love the fact that we were just one of the babes. Smack in the middle, kind of. Kind of, yeah. Kind of. And even potentially like on the lower end mm-hmm. of the spectrum. That was amazing to me. And I love being in a room to listen front to, to what I consider to be experts in the way of overcoming adversity within their marriages. And just the joy that they were like, yeah, I've been, you know, I've been coming for however many years and, you know, just looking forward to what the weekend had in store, you know, 
nothing like, oh, yeah, well, I've, I've been here before or, you know, I that was never anyone's, um, no one ever came across like that. They were like, yeah, well, we'll see what we got this time. Everyone was excited about being there. And that, that was the beauty of it. Like, okay, so shout out, I have to give a shout out um, to Tim and Angela Jamont. Pastor Tim. Pastor Tim. Because they are, you know, were chairing the board for CMCR as a pretend, you know, for for the conference, and they also have been attending the conference for twenty years. Mm-hmm. I think it's twenty plus years that they've actually been attending. Let that sink in. Attending marriage conferences for twenty years. There's a reason. If you ever wanted to, the, the answers to the test. Right, so I was like, "Oh, I got the answer to the test," and you're like, mm, "Nah, I'm gonna do my own thing." <laughs> I ain't gonna cheat. <laughs> I ain't gonna cheat. Look, look, look. Marriage. If, if there's ever gonna be an opportunity to cheat in a marriage, this is the way. Here's your cheat code: attend marriage conferences. Mm-hmm. Right, and actually, I, I think I just changed the name of the podcast or the name of this episode. It's gonna be the cheat code for marriage. Cheat code for marriage. Okay. Cheat code for marriage, because that's exactly what it is. It's an opportunity, like we said, to be around. So I, I think that learning new skills and being exposed to new tools is the second thing that I think is extremely important. So well, that go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and then you know, you talk about like you talked about um, building intimacy and um, just being able to focus on each other hmm. without. I think I already said it, kind of in with the outside distractions and stuff, but. That is so important. It's so important. And, you know, not only do you just sit and focus on each other, you know, you're doing things. There's activities that, um, oh man, that, that you do. We have some fun activities there. You oh, know, we had a blast. <laughs> you know, we had a lip sync contest, yes. you know, to some old songs. Um, it was group activities. It was, um, yeah. and if you go onto our social media, you know, for Married in a Crazy, you, you'll also see. That um, she was the peanut butter to my jelly. Yeah, I was the peanut butter to. I was trying to be the jelly, but no, nah, I'm jelly because I'm. You know, you sweet on me. <laughs> or I'm, something like that. Okay. But it was it was really good. I mean, so it was it was fun. It was fun, but you do. I was gonna say the third thing, honestly. So the first thing was to connect with other like minded couples, right? So, to to connect. I'm sorry. With okay. other married couples. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. The second one yeah. was to learn new skill sets as well as uh, be introduced or gain exposure to, to tools that you can use. I'd say the third thing would be strengthening your bond. It, it kind of, it's kind of, you, you mentioned it. I kinda, was like, well, I thought I kind of said, but okay. But I think strengthening your bond, you know, by, by attending a marriage conference, it gives you the opportunity, like you said, just to focus, but it includes the activities, exercises, you know, to, to really build out your intimacy, deepen your connection, build trust but also give you the opportunity again, without distractions to hold hands and, and walk and talk without a timeline of, okay, well we got to hurry up and get back because of the kids. Just make sure that you, when you walk and you talk, you stay in a lower altitude. (laughs) I thought my heart was going to (laughs) burst. She had me concerned, especially after the medical scare from last year concerning her heart. I'm like, okay, look now, uh, we all the way up here. <laughs> I was like, Lord. So we two and a half Lord. hours away from home. So, uh, you know, don't, don't be playing. No, but no, it, it is, you know, one thing, like I said before, I am not in by any way, any shape, an outdoor type of individual. I am so cool staying inside. But when we were in Tahoe, I'm it, you, when you say beautiful, Oh my goodness. It was so beautiful. It was, it was incredible. The view of the lake and the mountains with the, the, uh, the snow in the background, it was, it was just majestic. And then when you're up there and you're feeling that feeling, you know, like we're strengthening our bond. We, we walked, I mean, Lovey and I hold hands all the time anyway, but it felt kind of different um, yeah. while we were walking. Well, it probably felt different too because I was holding on for dear life, so I wouldn't pass out. <laughs> no, but we walked on but, the on. We, we went on the pier and mm-hmm. just got out there and just looked at the water and just just really was able to take in all was the majesty, serenity. 
Ooh, you know, like that, serenity. It was serenity. It's something about big bodies of water that when you just stare for me, I could just stare at I could just stare out at the water forever. I remember when we were on a cruise, um, the last cruise that we were on, and I just was I could just stand at the balcony and just look over at just look at the water. I don't know what it is, the cleansing of it or whatever. And then when the moon was shining on it, oh, it was it was majestic. But sorry, no, and that's a great word, serenity. The serenity of the, of the environment, the serenity of the, the the experience, allows you to relax, to be still, to listen and focus on each other. Mm-hmm. Right, it allows you to actually get to the point where you deepen your understanding of each other Mm -hmm. which is important we we had a phenomenal talk about sex (laughs) and no i'm not gonna tell you what we talked about um (laughs) but let it be known she told me i had to put the leather away and no more no because you weren't listening (laughs) no no but it was one of those things where she she and i had a chance to just sit down and again there was nobody tugging at us in any direction because you know we had to go do this it wasn't time bound like oh we've only got so much time and so there's that 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 anxiousness of being home at times. There it was just like, okay, let's just sit here and talk. Mm-hmm. We prayed together. It, it was it, well, we prayed together every day, but it was just, it was it was different. And sometimes this is these are the things you can't get anywhere else. And you should really strive to attend at least one marriage conference a year. It, the other good thing too, I feel like for me, it's like when I go somewhere and I don't know someone it makes me feel closer to you. So a lot of couples, you know, when, when you go places or you go to a marriage conference and you don't know what to expect, you, you may not know anyone there. You kind of get closer to your spouse. Hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping anyway, I know I do that. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, you better not. She did that in the beginning. y'all. Oh, you better hold it. Don't you wait till we get to the room. You gotta use the bathroom. <laughs> okay, hot topic. Hot topic. Here we go. I wish I had an alarm and sound effects. Wah, wah, wah. Hot topic. H O T. Honest, open, and transparent. That's how it started with her clinging to me a little bit because she didn't know anybody. By the end of the conference, I was like, "Where's my wife?" Uh-uh. She was talking to everybody, walking around, taking pictures, and okay, and I was taking pictures. A ton of pictures. pictures. Look, she was making plans for dinner dates <laughs> with the other couples. And they're like, I, I, the, the brother I talked to today was like, well, apparently our wives have talked, and they're, so funny. It was like they, they're making play dates for the husbands. So funny! <laughs> Look, shout out to uh, the pals too, because she said, uh, she's like, yeah, I'm. You know, we don't live that far from you. She goes, I'm coming over to your house, and I'm coming over, to put my feet up. I said, I'm gonna let you. you. Just let me know when. You know, it was it was just really funny. It was really funny. It was a great weekend. Yeah, you know, it was and, great. And, and and in all seriousness. You know, this really is a cheat code for marriage. It's an easy one. And there's a variety of different conferences that you can go to. You just have to find, go, just do a Google search. Take a look at what is out there mm-hmm. and commit. Commit. It's an investment of time, a little bit of resources. And the resources that you commit can be replenished in some way, shape, or form. But what you don't, what you, what you risk by not going not just your marriage, but it's it's your your mindset. You risk not investing in probably one of the most important things of your life. And, and it's not an expense. Do not look at it as an expense. Look at it as a true investment in your marriage. Um, we got there, and unbeknownst to us, our cousins were there. <laughs> we didn't know they were going. They didn't know we were going. They didn't know that we were facilitating. Mm-hmm. Um, that we were, you know, actually on the agenda and. I had a coworker um I saw there and she was totally surprised. You know, well, I was surprised too, but yeah. Uh, Snook's brother attended. Now we knew he was going, but we didn't know that he signed up cuz um one day I was talking to him say, "Yeah, we've been invited to actually go to you know, and I expect him. He's like, "Yeah, we we signed up. We're going to that." So it was funny that <laughs> all that transpired and it, it was just it, it was amazing. And and you have to go you know, and find something that, that appeals to both of you. Yeah. So let me just really just throw this out there real quick for those, for some people who may think otherwise. 
going to marriage conferences and retreats is not just for people who are having challenges Come on. in their marriages. You know, we always think, um, we think of coaching. We look at therapy. We look at, it's like, it's almost like we look at anything that will enhance us as, Oh, I don't need that. Cause I'm okay. Or, you know, it's always, it's never like, Oh, that sounds like a great idea to, like I said, get me from, um, good to great to great to uh phenomenal it's just you're like well i don't need improvement so why would i go to that why would i it's it's not just for couples who are having challenges it's for it's like i said it's the cheat code it is it is cheat code. Yeah. well like lovey said i should say it's the cheat code so don't ever misunderstand or ever think that the only reason people go to marriage conferences or uh, retreats is because they're having tra- um, challenges or there's something wrong in their marriage. No, they they thought enough of their marriage to invest and say, Amen. you know what? I, I think we can do better because we can always do better. Come on. We can always do better. So um, just keep that in mind when you start looking or when you decide to not look. It's not just about issues or challenges. It's about Coming and being around people who love to be with their spouses or just want to enhance. Right. We, we had mentioned, you know, we gave a shout out to Pastor Tim and Angela and uh, Jamat. And I mentioned that they had been attending this conference for 20 plus years. Not because they've got 20 plus years of problems and they need to go. <laughs> right. They have a phenomenal marriage because they've been attending for 20 plus years. And they want to pour back into other people. They have a heart. It's on their spirit to pour into other couples because of what they've received. Mm-hmm. And, and and just as we do, just as um, the other couples the that are on the ex- executive house. board, yeah. All these the other world, individuals. My cousins. Right, right. You know, the Swanigans. Um, it, it was just, it's there's a lot. There's a lot that you can actually gain. And we're just encouraging you to actually take the time to seek out a marriage conference and to ensure that you make the time for it. Mm-hmm. And if you're ever in the area looking for a destination, please take a look for And we can speak highly and recommend, you know, the CMCR. Um, if you look up cmcrsacramento.org, you can actually see the organization. And they, they've been doing this since 1979. And we encourage you to, uh, to join, mm-hmm. to come in and hang out next year because we absolutely positively plan we'll on be attending going back yes 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 Definitely. so hey hopefully we've given you some reasons to actually attend a marriage conference particularly if you're looking for that cheat code and in the meantime if you're looking for some additional training and when it comes to different ways to, to up your game when it comes to marriage to go to the next level whatever that may be if you're going from needs improvement to good if you want to go from good to great if you want to go from great to phenomenal whatever wherever you are you know take a look at Um, the Raise the Bar marriage series that we have available. And you get to set the price. It's not us saying that it's going to cost X, Y, Z. Some of you know the story that Snooks said, you know, I don't want to charge what we charge, even though people were buying it and giving testimonies. She wanted to remove all barriers. Remember, she did. I was like, nope, let them pay. No, I'm just playing. But she wanted to remove all barriers. So you can actually go to raisethebarmarriage.com and look at the testimonials and see the 18 part video series and go ahead and pay what you believe the value is that you're looking for in your marriage. That's going to be able to assist you. Uh, it might be a tune up. It might be getting to the next level. It might just be saying, Hey, we just want to make sure that we've got some additional tools and resources like we've talked about. Again, that's raise the bar marriage.com. And the link will be in the show notes. We'll also put a link for the CMCR Sacramento. So that way, if you're interested in checking out that particular marriage conference, um, that you have a path to stay in touch. And I would say fill out their form so that way you can be on their mailing list and they can make you aware of the next location. I believe it's going to be in Tahoe again, but you never know. Mm -hmm. Things do change. So, But you can at least be aware of what it's happening. I know that wherever it's going to be, it's going to be in a beautiful location with a lot of beautiful people. Including us. Hey. (laughs) So until the next time. Be blessed. All right, y'all. Bye-bye.